gaining in information complexity. Just the opposite of the second law. Evolution clearly contradicts this law. But what about the Bible? You know the Bible almost teaches the second law of thermodynamics? What happened at the fall? God placed a curse, decay. Romans 8.22 teaches all creation groaneth. The Bible teaches the entire creation is in decay. Exactly the second law. So the Bible agrees with this law. Evolution contradicts it. Then we have the law of cause and effect, which teaches for every effect there has to be an equal to or greater than cause. Every effect has to have a cause. That begs this question then, what caused that mythical ball of matter to suddenly start expanding called the Big Bang Explosion? And the answer I get a lot of times is, oh Mike, let's not talk about that. It doesn't have anything to do with evolution. Yes, it does. Because I open up these biology textbooks, I open up these astronomy textbooks, and every one of them I see the Big Bang. Folks, that is an effect. And if you're going to put an effect in a science textbook, we have the right to ask, what was the cause? And if you can't explain the cause, then we need to take it out of the textbook and put it into a philosophy classroom where it belongs. We need to keep science to the science classrooms, not faith and philosophy. So the evolution model has no answer to this question. But the Bible starts off with, in the beginning, God created. And we accept that by faith again, so we have a reasonable answer. So the Bible agrees with this law, evolution contradicts it. Then we have the law of biogenesis, which teaches that life only comes from life. Why is that a natural law? Because that is all we've ever observed. No known exceptions. And what are they teaching in our biology classrooms? That three and a half billion years ago, folks, chemicals evolved into a living cell. That, folks, is scientifically impossible. So evolution clearly contradicts this natural law of science. But what does the Bible teach? That in the beginning, God, a living being, created all life. The Bible agrees with every one of these natural laws. Evolution contradicts every one. So let's go back to that original statement. Evolution is science. Creation is religion. Is that a true statement? No, it is not. Both models must ultimately rely on faith. But there's a difference between our faith. See, in the Bible, we have miracles. We recognize we have a God of miracles. We have a miracle maker. So we have a reasonable faith. The evolution model clearly requires miracles but they have no miracle maker. That is called a blind faith. Which faith would you rather have then? A reasonable faith or a blind faith? Here's another statement I commonly hear. Mike, the battle is between science and the Bible. No, it is not. Who created all the science? God did. Is he in a battle with himself? No. You see, the real battle is between evolution and the Bible. And you can also add the battles between evolution and science because they're not the same thing either. So we need to get our story straight. The battle is not between science and the Bible. We believe real science. What we don't accept is the philosophy of evolution. So, down to the final statement here. Why it matters what we believe. Let's go back to Genesis 1.31. What does it mean when God calls his entire creation very good? Does it mean death and decay? Because if it does, then who is the author of death? Not sin, but God himself. What does it mean in Exodus 20, verse 11, when God writes down himself in the Ten Commandments that he created everything in six days? Does he not remember what he did? And what does it mean in John chapter 5, verse 46 and 47, when Jesus Christ says, Moses wrote about me. If you can't believe what Moses wrote, how will you believe what I say? See, he put Genesis as the foundation for all our Christian doctrines. How can you go out and tell anybody that marriage is between one man and one woman if you don't take Genesis as true history? You have no right to do that. How can you go out and tell anybody about sin if Genesis is not true history? How can you talk about the cross without Genesis as true history? Because it's the foundation for every one of our Christian doctrines. It is the whole reason why Jesus Christ had to go to the cross. But then what have been the effects of all this evolution teaching? One of the main reasons our youth are leaving the church today is they cannot defend a belief in the Bible. 
I go to Sunday schools all over this country, specifically high school Sunday schools, and ask them questions, and they can't defend a belief in the Bible. I go to adult Sunday schools, and they can't do it either. What does that say about Christian education in this country then? When we have people been in Sunday school classes for 12, 14, 15 years and still can't defend a belief in the Bible. But it gets worse than that. The studies have now shown that we are losing 70%. 70% of our students are leaving the church after high school because of this issue. 70%. Because no one ever taught them. And what does that state now? What that means is this. Any church that does not see this as a critical issue is really saying this. They are not concerned with 70% of their youth. So what are they concerned with? Well, this is what we have observed across this country that many churches are concerned with. Specifically, the high school level. Bringing in the numbers... So we look good on paper and then entertaining them like the world. That is what we see predominantly across this country. Now, I'm not saying entertainment's bad, but when it becomes the main focus so that you can keep the numbers in there, that is why we are losing 70% of our youth today. So what can be done about all this? The Bible teaches what can be done. Right out of 1 Peter 3.15, where it states, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, what does 1 Peter 3.15 mean? Well, it means this. We must understand what we believe. We must understand why we are Christians. And here's the part we fail to recognize. We must be able to articulate what we believe, which means we have to have a ready answer. We have just listened to overwhelming biblical and scientific evidence confirming the Genesis account of creation as true history. We heard that the Bible does answer the question of how God created and that the days of creation in Genesis were literal days. We heard that Jesus Christ testified to a belief in creation. We also heard why creation is an important doctrine to the church. Finally, Mike pointed out an alarming statistic. Because of the church's failure to address this subject, we are losing many of our youth. If you'd like more information on the subject of creation, or if you'd like to get a copy of this book containing all the information you've heard, or other DVDs and products by Mike Riddle, visit the website www.traintoequip.com. Thank you, and remember Colossians 1.16, for by Him were all things created.